theme that runs throughout the book. And the theme is this. The people of God were rebellious. They weren't right with God. Their heart was divided toward the Lord. Now, they weren't right in a number of ways. They weren't right in their worship. They weren't right in their walk. They weren't right in their affections with the world. In everything about their life, they had strayed from the Lord. They were rebellious and judgment was coming. But what I love about the book of Hosea is God reminds His people over and over again that though their heart was divided toward God, God's heart was not divided toward them. And though they'd strayed from the Lord and rebelled, God kept the door of hope cracked in their life and gave them opportunity to come back and be restored unto Him. Now, that might not help you, but that helps me. Because often I'm like the song, I'm prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. But I'm glad God doesn't disown His children. I'm glad God keeps a welcome at at the door of eternity, and we can always come back and have our fellowship restored unto the Lord. Now, here in verse number 12 that we read together, we find a piece of instruction that they would have to follow to see revival. God is telling them, if you want to see revival, if you want to be restored, you've got to follow this piece of advice. Here it is in verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. Now I'll say it again. God was willing to restore them. God wanted to revive them. But first He said He must break up your fallow ground. Amen. Now, when I preach in the city, uh, I was preaching uh, in, in a major city not too long, and they don't know what that means. But y'all probably understand what breaking up fallow ground means. That would have been a very familiar term to an Israelite in Hosea's day. They were largely agricultural people. What he's saying is fallow ground is ground that would be right at the surface of a field. It's ground that would have been baked by the sun and hardened under the wheels of carts. It was almost like concrete. It was ground that might have produced in the past, but had been left to sit idle so long that now it was unfruitful. Now it would not produce. It'd be full of debris, rocks, trash, things that would impede growth. So that farmer would take his plow and hook it up to a team of oxen or a mule or something like that and he began to drive that plow through that fallow ground. Very violent, very destructive. I mean, it would just totally alter uh, uh, that field. That plow would begin to drive into that hard ground and turn it over. It'd get snagged on a rock, pull that rock out of the way. It'd get hung up on a root, he'd drive that team and get that root out of the way. All of the trash that was keeping it from being a fruitful field would be removed. That hard ground would get turned over and softened. And then that farmer could go and sow his seed. If he'd sown seed on fallow ground, he'd be better off to sow seed on that road down there. Right. Be a waste. Of, I preached in some churches like that. And I'm having flashbacks this afternoon. Uh, but anyway, I mean, just be a waste of time. So he'd take that plow, break up that ground, then he could sow his seed. Then the water could fall. The sun would warm the earth. And that field that was dead could live again. That barren field could bring forth fruit again. That field that was fallow, now it could be productive only because it had been turned over. It had been busted up. So here's what God is saying. In your rebellion, you've gotten hard toward me. In your drifting, you've gotten calloused. As you've strayed from me, you become like fallow ground. Your heart is cold and hard. And I want to bless you. And I want to meet your need. And I want to send revival. But first, you've got to be willing to do the work and prepare the soil of your heart to receive that reviving. Here's how it's said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Now here's the breaking up and turn. A lot of people don't like that part and turn from their wicked ways. Amen. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now let me say it again. Revival is on God's resume. In fact, I think it's on His to-do list. But God will not be able to revive a people that refuse to get them placed in position to receive that reviving. The old preachers used to say, get under the spout where the glory comes out. You know, there's just something about getting in the right place so that God can do the work that God wants to do. And I'll say it again. Just because we have a good meeting doesn't mean we have revival. And I didn't drive all the way here from Kentucky just to have a good meeting. I could have that on my couch watching something on YouTube. Amen right there. I want to see God do something. I just happen to believe that God wants to do a work in the hills of West Virginia. This place isn't here on accident. Amen. 
Hello? I mean, people live up and down these streets and in these hollows. And listen, they need something more than just another dead church. Those are a dime a dozen. He said, I don't know why nobody will come to our church. And I'm saying, I wouldn't go to your church either. I need pills to make it through a service. Amen. I mean, somebody died and we called the hospital. They dragged five people out before they found the corpse. I mean, that's the way it is. Can I say that's not the way it's supposed to be? People say, well, young people don't want old-time religion. Sure they do. They just don't want dead old-time religion. And can I say there's a big difference in just showing up punching the time clock, biding our time till the lunch bell rings, and having revival. And that's what I want to see. But if we're going to see that, it takes more than putting on a tie, wearing a dress, and sweating it out on a summer evening. We're going to have to prepare our hearts so that God can move. I just happen to believe that the same God who sent revival in the days of George Whitfield is my God. Amen. And the God who blessed in the days of Jonathan Edwards is on the throne. And the same God of John Knox and these others, Moody and Sunday, he's still our God today. And I'm jealous. I want God to do it in my generation. Amen. But first, I've got to be willing to break up my file of ground. Let me give you three words. Number one, if we're going to see God move, we've got to get honest. Amen. Here's what he said. Break up your fallow ground. God did not look down from heaven and say, you know what? I reckon that ground might be fallow. No, he said it is fallow. Amen. God took a census. And here's the outcome of it. As he scanned all of Israel, here's the sum, here's the sum total. Your hearts are hard. Now, you'd have to be living in a basement. I mean, no Wi-Fi connection. Totally cut off from society to not believe we need a revival in 2018. Amen. I mean, you've got brain cells that have not shook hands in months if you don't think we need a revival in America in 2018. Amen. It's a mess. We sing revival songs and have revival meetings, but how often do we actually experience revival? Now, I'm not even talking about the world. Now, we spend a lot of time preaching about the world, but the world and what keeps you and I from having revival, we keep us from having revival. Amen. And I'm against a lot of things in this world, uh, I mean, as we're supposed to be. But last time I checked, the lost people didn't keep me from having the fire of God burning in my heart. Amen. Hello? It's my own condition toward God that keeps... And here's what I'm talking about, the field of Christianity. Is it not fallow? Amen. Let me ask you this. Is revival taking place in the average church? Baptist trees are nothing more than homes for Christmas trees and spider webs. Hello? It's still on. I just want to make sure it's still on. Have a church run 100 people, have soul winning visitation, you got two people show up. Hello? But you got dinner on the grounds and 200 come out. I don't know why we don't have revival. I, I came to preach. I mean, he asked me to preach this week. Uh, I mean, you got 100 on Sunday morning, 50 on Sunday night, 25 on Wednesday. I'm going to blow your mind. Here's some deep theology. The same God that's God on Sunday morning is God on Sunday night. Amen. And every once in a while, He even moves on Wednesday. Amen. We've gone from separating from the world to trying to assimilate with the world. Amen. We've Amen. gone from having the power of God to trying to eclipse or overshadow our lack of power by putting on a show. Hello? I don't go to church to get entertained. I go to church to get transformed. Amen. Amen. We've gone from songs like they sang today that glorify God and have some doctrine to it. There's just something that sounds good. Right. I'm all for it sounding good, but I want it to have something for my soul in it too. Amen, so amen right there. I mean, we've gone from churches that look like church to now these nightclub-esque places. I got saved out of that. Right. So I'm uncomfortable going back in it. Amen. I understand some people have been raised up in, in Christianity and a good, a good atmosphere. They've never experienced the bar life, so they're happy trying to make their church look like one. But if you've ever been in that, you don't want to go back to it once you've been brought forth from it. Amen. And don't be a hypocrite because you're the same way. Is it, listen, when you go to Starbucks, you want it to look like Starbucks. You say, what's Starbucks? This is West Virginia. You all got one in Charleston. But anyway, when you go to the dentist office, you want it to look like a dentist office, don't you? Yeah. Now, you when you go to the mechanics, you want him to have grease on his shirt and his name too. So don't be a hypocrite and tell me that church ought not look like church. Same in right there. Amen. We've gone from having big days to wanting to have a big time. I'm afraid the average church makes about as much impact on its city as a gnat landing on the back of a buffalo. They don't even know they're there. I'll go somewhere and preach for a week and go to Walmart to buy something during the week and have a tract from that church and hand it to the cashier. And, and he or she'll say, where in the world is that church? I'll say, right across the road from Walmart. <laughs> they don't even know they exist. Hello? I mean, when's the last time we saw altars lined with people crying out to God to save their lost loved ones? Amen. Or restore a prodigal? I mean, what happened to that? When was the last time the track rack got emptied out and the preacher had to go order more? I mean, he'd have a heart attack. 
You say, I don't like our preacher. Well, kill him. Go take every gospel track and go pass it out and he'll die of a heart attack. <laughs> That's what I have. <laughs> I like, I, I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for the, the, the I, now, I never thought I'd have to vote for either one, disclaimer, reality star or a woman who deserves to be in prison, I don't know, uh, but I never thought that would happen, you should not get political, that's why you didn't get asked to preach, uh, but anyway, I, I never thought I'd have to vote for either one, but I'm thankful for the outcome, Amen. thank you, but anyway, <laughs> Amen. I don't know if he's a saved man or not. He would say he is, but anybody who calls it 2 Corinthians still needs to do some Bible study. But anyway, uh, I, I don't know. But at his inauguration, my, uh, my pastor got to go to the inauguration. He was there and he said he had a preacher pray before he preached. Or before he was inaugurated. I mean, he had a preacher pray. And he called up the preacher and said, Pastor Paula White! <laughs> now can I say, that's just not biblical. Amen. I'm for ladies. I married one. I like them just fine. But a woman preaching the Bible is as weird to God as a man giving birth. Amen. I get stuck in airports all the time. That's where you find $25 hamburgers and $30 Cokes. You know what I mean? But they have bookstores. And you go to the inspirational section. They can't call it Christian because there's not much Christianity in it. But they don't have any books by people who believe the Bible. It's all people, you know, off the wall on everything. But that's what the world thinks of Christianity. They laugh at us now. Amen. Do we not need revival? Yeah. So number one, we have to get honest with the fact that we're not where we ought to be as far as Christians go. Amen. But number two, we have to be humble enough to understand that the reason the whole is rotten is because the individual is. Right. Yeah. Because the way the verse is worded, break up your fallow ground, it would hit Israel as a whole, but also the individual Israelite would have to take ownership of the fact that they're part of the problem. And here's where I find the disconnect is with most revival meetings. The disconnect is this. We're willing to go to the meeting, and we even have a good idea who needs to get right. Yeah. But we're not willing to take our life and take it like an open book and hand it to God and say, you go through the book of my life, and if something doesn't balance out with you, I'm going to let you fix it. And that's the disconnect between just having a meeting and revival. When we have a governor on any area of our life, or a break, or a fence, or a roadblock, or a locked door, we're not going to have God move the way God wants to move in our life. Here's what I found out. Most people hate everybody else's sin and like their own. In fact, I'll just go and tell on me so you don't get mad at me. I hate your sin. Your sin drives me insane. I get on Facebook and get down that black hole of Facebook, you know, and just go one person to another person. To run. Oh, did you see what she was wearing? Did you see that country music lyric he quoted? I'm talking about the Sunday school teacher. Uh, I mean, did you see where they went? Oh, and I'll lose sleep over it. But I kind of like my sin. I hope it's quiet because you're listening and they're not dead from heat. But anyway... <laughs> But isn't that how we handle it most of the time? Amen. You'll never have revival till your sin bothers you more than everybody else's sin. True. True. Most people come to church and say, well, preacher got them. They needed it. In fact, last week a woman did that to me. She said, preach hard, preacher. They need it. I made a mental note. Preach the devil out of that witch. But anyway, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she, most people like it when I preach against stuff they're not doing. Right. So I go to these churches where most folks are in church and they live a, a good respectable life, at least in public, and I'll preach against liquor and say, you ought not drink liquor, you ought not smell liquor. Anybody who tries to give you license and twist a Bible verse to give you permission to drink liquor is probably not saved. They ought not have anything to do with it. And they'll say, hey man, preach, I preach, and I will. And I'll preach against liberal politicians and they'll say, preach, preach. None of them ever come hear me preach. They'll say, preach! Preach against all the corruption in our society, in our schools, and different things. They'll say, preach! And they don't give them something they do. It's like crickets. Yeah. Yeah. Every year I'd preach at a church in, in, in one of the Carolinas, not the southern one, but I'd always preach at one of these churches, and it was in the mountains. And it's just a cultural thing. Everybody there smokes. They all do. All of them do. I'm talking about from the womb they smoke. From the nursery to the pulpit, they all have a lighter. No doubt about it. But I'd go to that church. The preacher smoked. His wife smoked. They all smoked cigarettes. I mean, to get in the service, you have to... <sighs> I had to quit taking my wife because she was always... <sighs> you know, I say, no, blow out. But anyway, she's always high as a kite. But anyway, everybody smoked. And I'd preach there. And you know, North Carolina, they'll shout about anything. 
I mean, you can get the pulpit. Say, pray for me. I got a rash down the left side of my body. They think it could be terminal. Praise the Lord. God is good, bro. They don't even listen to what you're saying. They just won't say amen. You know, this is how it is. And so I'd preach there and I'd preach and they'd be hacking. I'd be preaching until my spleen was bleeding. They'd preach me to death. And then I'd get on smoking. I said, I said, smoking! Yeah. Smoking cigarettes! So then I'd have to buckle down. If God wanted you to smoke, He'd have put a chimney on your head. <laughs> Camels are for riding, not smoking. Yeah. And they'd just stare at me like I have five eyeballs. <laughs> Bow up real big, and I'd walk out and go to my hotel room, smell like, you know. <laughs> well, you all know, but anyway. Can I say that's the, that's the wrong way? The best way to leave church is to go home saying, I'm glad I did. The worst way to leave church is to go home saying, I wish I would have. Right. When right. God speaks, you obey, and you'll never regret it. Amen. You say, Brother Cooper, preach against something good. All right, let me preach about this. Prayerlessness. Amen. Hello. What's in our field? I'm not talking about the world's field. We'll preach against that. But the, our field. How many of us have spent over five minutes in prayer today? And I don't know why we didn't have revival. Of course, I didn't have time to ask God for it. But anyway, I'm talking about not reading your Bible. Amen. Study the show thyself approved unto God. Pre preachers every week are telling me, I can't keep my people off of Facebook reading after heretics. And, th and the problem is, if those people knew their Bible, they wouldn't follow heretics on Facebook. Right. Hello? I don't know why I'm in a bad mood. I guess because I'm preaching outside. Under the, but anyway... <laughs> I'm talking about gossiping. Amen. I don't know why we don't have revival. Let me tell you what I saw so-and-so do the other day. I heard a preacher say the other day, his wife, and he, you've heard before, they, they came home from church. He said, do you see what sister so-and-so had on? He said, I didn't. She said, well, did you see what brother so-and-so did? He said, I must have missed it. So would you notice and said something else? He goes, I don't guess I saw it. She goes, what do you go to church for anyway? <laughs> I'm talking about being critical of everything. Amen. Some people only come to church so they can tell everybody what they're doing wrong. I like it. People who don't do anything know what everybody who's doing something ought to be doing and how they ought to do it. I don't like the way they sang, but at least they'll sing. Right. Hello? I don't like the way he teaches class, but at least he comes to Sunday school. <laughs> Hello? I, I mean, critical of everything. I didn't like the way he preached. I don't like the way, I didn't like what she said. I don't like what he wore. Now get over it. He ain't perfect either. Hello? Right. I'm talking about having revival. I'm talking about being bitter about something. And I've had to deal with this even today while the, while, while the singing is going on. Like they're singing four songs. No, it's five songs. You know, but I'm just kidding. But anyway, I mean, bitterness, you know. I was preaching at a church, and a woman on this side hated somebody on that side. I didn't even know it. There's just two women had problems with each other. And in the message, I mentioned bitterness. I think I was preaching on tithing, and some just naturally got on bitterness. But anyway, I was preaching on bitterness, and this, this woman stood up. Right back there is Roger. Wake Roger. Right, right back there what he said. Anyway, she stood up. Sorry to bother you. But anyway, she stood up, walked around the front, and that woman stood up and walked around the front, and I thought, they're going to fight. And I thought, hallelujah, because this, I mean, we need whatever it takes. I don't care. But then they, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have one of those this week for we're done. But anyway, they both came to the front and embraced each other, began to weep, and got on the altar, and got, got whatever it was right. And I didn't know they had a problem. Preacher told me afterwards they'd been fighting with each other for years, wouldn't talk to each other. By the way, grow up. Amen. Right. Amen. Now here's the best part. They got right with God. The next night, both of their sons came. They had, both of them had a son that was like 20 years old. They never would come to church because their mamas had a bad attitude. Both those boys walked the aisle the next night. This really happened. This ain't preaching. This happened. Both those people walked the aisle and got saved the next night. Amen. Amen. Why? Because mom's got the roadblock out of the way. Right. So number one, got to get honest. Right. Number two, we got to be humble enough to say, maybe I do. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only back person here that's prone to slide from God. But I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I get cold on God. Amen. Yeah. In fact, every day I have to go ahead and refuel that fire for God. All right. The third word is this. Got to get hurried about it. See what he says? For it is time. To seek the Lord. Amen. Here's the thing. God is saying, I can, I want to, and I will, but if you want me to, you better get right now. Amen. I don't think we got the luxury to play around with God. I think when the Holy Spirit deals with us and the conviction is thick, I believe that's the time to get it right. Amen. I don't believe you ought to say, well, when I get home and it's air conditioned, I'm going to take a shower, get out of these clothes, get me a bowl of ice cream, sit in my chair, and then I'm going to sleep. Right? 
Or maybe Ellis says, get in the car, we'll talk about it on the way. No, you're not going to fight about something. You're going to forget everything else. Didn't fight with your wife on the way home. But anyway, that's just what happens. I found out when I come to church, God speaks to me about something. If I don't get it settled right then, I usually don't. Amen. And here's something else I found out. Every time I go to church, God deals with me. Amen. In fact, I believe every time the Bible's open, God speaks to our heart. I try to stay as close to God as possible, and I fail at it every day. I'm, I'm a person just like you are. I mean, I have bad days, and if my wife is here, she'd have said amen. But anyway, this is how it happens. But I try to pray and read my Bible because i got to preach to people. And the worst thing to do is to try to preach to people and not have the presence and power of God on your life and do it in your own strength. Amen. So because of that, I want to try to stay as close to God, right with God as I can, knowingly can. But I say that to say this, every time I come to church, He still whoops me about something. Amen. amen. So surely He's got to be speaking to you about something. Right. True. I don't believe it's that God isn't speaking. I believe that we're not obeying God. Amen. The problem is this. Sometimes we just won't let go. You ever try to convince someone to eat something and they won't? My wife's a picky eater. She's the perfect girl to date, though, because it was always McDonald's and that's what she wanted. First time she'd ever been out to an Olive Garden, I took her. And now she's hooked on that. But anyway, I, that was my mistake. But anyway, chicken nuggets are a whole lot better than chicken fed ch Alfredo or whatever. But anyway, uh, she's picky. And we'll sit there. And the worst thing, the, the worst thing that gets on, not about her. I love everything about her. She's got no problems at all. But no flaws. But anyway, the, people like that. Not her, but people like her. Uh, what bugs me is when they smell it and they won't taste it. Yeah. <laughs> Try that. You're going to like it. I don't like the way it smells. Try it. You know, that's what I want to do. And I'm just gonna, you're missing out. You're missing out. That's what I want to... It's like if you had a bowl of ice cream. I mentioned it three or four times. But anyway, ice cream, chocolate. What's your favorite kind of ice cream? Vanilla? You just name it. You had that. And I'm trying to convince Brother Burton, try it. No problem. He says, yeah. he says I'm not going to try it. Oh, you've got to try this. I'm not going to like it. You're going to like it. Yeah. I don't think I'll... It's sweet. It's cold. You're going to like it. I just don't feel like it. Try it. That's the way I feel like when I'm preaching to people. Amen. And I'm saying, if you just let God get in on this thing, Amen. you would like it. Amen. In fact, it would ruin you. Yeah. It would change the way you do church. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you ever tasted and saw that the Lord was good, and you just let go and let God have His way, you'd like it. Amen. I want to see God do something. I want to see God move. And that doesn't have to be one of those big sweeping... But if just one family gets strengthened, maybe one person gets saved, maybe one man surrenders or one lady gives her life to God, that's what I'm talking about. I want to see God do something. But if it's going to happen, you and I have to make sure that we're not going to be a roadblock or a finger in the, in the flood wall of this thing so that God can move. Break up your fallow ground. I'm not talking about lost people. I'm talking about you and I. Amen. What can we do to help this meet and go forward and have the presence of God on it. Anything between your... We've seen the song, Nothing Between My Soul and the Savior. Amen. If there's anything between, let's get it out of the way this afternoon. Amen? Let's bow our heads closed. We'll have an invitation this afternoon. That's why we come to church is to meet with God and when God's